As you've seen in the invitation, we have lots of guests. And all guests are equal, but some are more equal than others. And, and, and Rima, we, we, we thought we would start with you. Uh, and welcome, and thanks for coming here. Where, where were you standing, by the way? Uh, I was at the wall. At the wall, in, in the ceiling, as far as we can get. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And uh, take, take a small step close. And for the people who don't, who doesn't know Rima? Yeah, so we need to introduce you. Hi, I'm Rima. Um, I, am in, I work in social psychology. I'm a postdoc here at Tilburg. And I started uh, working here about a year ago. And um, open science is sort of my hobby. So thanks for having me here. Yeah. <laughs> it's great to have you here. And it is your hobby, and um, you were standing in the seat, but some other people said, well, of course, it's a good thing, but we have, for example, we have privacy issues, and someone else said that we also have career issues. What do you think about what's being said just in, from the audience? Well, I, it resonates very well with what I've heard before being said, so this is these uh, concerns that I heard sort of that seem to be against open science, but I don't actually think that they are. But these, uh, these concerns, they pop up again and again when uh, I go to different places to talk to different people about this issue. Yeah. And um, it, yeah, so it seems like um, we are at a, at a point where we can decide what to do, in which direction to go. There are some people who worry, and I can very well understand these worries, and no one's alone with them. Um, but I think there are things that we can do about it. Yeah. For example, is that one of the things that you've done? You, you've done a MOOC, a massive open course, a massive open online course? Um, I'm not sure how massive, it, oh. massive it's going to be, but it's definitely open and it yeah. will also be online. Um, I think it's still <laughs> being edited, but um, so far it's all recorded. And this course is about um, basically introducing why open science is just a natural consequence of doing science. So um, I, I talked with a colleague before, uh, and he said, um, if you want to define open science, basically uh, cross out the open, it's just science. Um, um, because um, open science calls for making your materials available so that others can collaborate with you, and making science a more um, transparent endeavor. And necessarily, if we want to be able to see if our findings hold up, if we want to be able to see if we can contribute to the work that someone else has done and extend it and learn some new stuff, then it's completely necessary that it will be open yeah. um, because only like this can we work on science together. Yeah. And, and uh, shall we take a look at a, at a small bit to see what it is in practice? Oh, sure. Or, or do you want to go? Yeah, we'll take a look. Sure. Yeah. Welcome to this chapter of the Open for Insight course, where we work on some basic philosophical topics revolving around the question, what is true? We want to find out how we can learn things about the world, how we can know how the world works. More specifically, we will address three areas. First, how can we know things are true? In other words, how can we verify what is true, fact, and real? Second, how can we know things aren't true? In other words, how can we falsify a speculation and show it is indeed not true? And third, how can we rely on things we think are not false? In other words, how can we rely on the works of others? So give us a small impression. How does this, this, this is the end, this is what, what it's done. How, how did this start? What was the first thought where you were like taking a run in the park and then suddenly thought, this is what I should do? No, I didn't start with a run in the park. It started with, uh, I was teaching. Um, I was teaching uh, undergrad students who were um, about to do their first experiment in psychology. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that they don't really know, at least in, at that time, they didn't really know what experiments are good for and why we use them as the go-to method, at least in, in behavioral uh, science. Yeah. And I thought that's not okay. That's basically, I mean, I like experiments and I think we, we should teach better how, um, how, how they work and why. And so I tried to take a little bit of a very fundamental approach um, using some philosophy of science to justify why experiments are one of the great ways of doing science. And I, like I said before, I think just uh, open science kind of naturally folds into this, yeah. so it made sense to me to uh, combine it with the two. Yeah. And, uh, was it hard to do? Because you must have a busy schedule, as we all have. There's lots of things to do on your to-do list, and then you also are going to do this? Or was your boss so friendly to say, oh, take as many hours as you like? <laughs> um, so I, I don't think uh, he would say, take as many hours as you like. Um, as you know, the time is the one thing that's very constrained in, in research, of course. Um, but I, I was um, able to do this also with great support uh, from Don and the open science community here yeah. in Tilburg. And uh, I also had support from um, the Wikimedia Foundation, um, who supported 
me in the process of coming up with what exactly I wanted to put in the course, so I wasn't alone with it. Yeah. And um, that's, I think, one of the big uh, nice things about the open science community, it's actually a community. So um, if you are stuck somewhere or you need support somewhere, you can usually find someone who knows what to do. Yeah. And, and if we're talking from a scientific point of view, this community, how big is it to, to give us an impression, to give us an idea? Is this, are you like a small part of a big cake or are you already maybe mainstream? Um, I think we're growing. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, so if you're in, in a community, you tend to see people everywhere. So I think in every conference I go to, I always meet people that I've seen before. Um, but it, sometimes you forget then that not everyone's on board. And um, also here, most people were standing on this side of the room. So it seems like, ah, you're also kind of on board already. Maybe not like on the wall, but like on the way there. Um, and that makes, of, makes me at least often forget that there are some people who, who massively disagree. Yeah. And um, so I, I think it's important to keep that in mind. It's, it's not a self-fulfilling prophecy. Open science will just not randomly become the new norm or the norm. Um, it won't happen by itself. Yes, it won't happen by itself, but we actually have to do something for it if we think yeah. that this is the way we should take science. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in your opinion, what is the, the biggest step or the biggest challenge we need to, to, to take? Um, oof, that's a difficult question. I think the biggest, uh, the biggest problem is the publishing landscape. Um, and so it makes sense that here we are at an open access event as well. Um, I think changing incentives for how we publish, what we can publish, how we pay for, do we have to pay for things that we publish. Um, I think that will, you know, if there, if there was um, a one magic thing to happen, I would hope that the publishing landscape would change completely. Okay, okay. and another thing that's also important here on the university is always what is the definition? And we can talk the whole afternoon only about the definition of open science and open access. We can have huge battles about it. But then we're not learning from all the people that we're going to invite in. So you have the honor of saying for us, as a dictator, what is the definition that we're going to use? What is, do you think, the best definition of open science and open access? So we all know what we're talking about. Mm. So um, I think for open science, I would go with the uh, definition by Foster of open science, which is that um, open science means science is done in a way that makes it possible for others to collaborate and contribute. Yeah. And um, out of this definition then follows that it must be transparent. Um, the way we do science and uh, open access ties in there um, because um, well if people can't read your paper they can't read about your research uh, because it's hidden behind a paywall yeah. um, that means it's not transparent yeah. uh, so open access to me means publishing in a way that is um, accessible to others yeah. and i think access is the one big topic in open more generally whether it's open access software hardware anything yeah. can we live with that i think we can do we have questions so far for rima Things you want to know, things you want to share, or want to compliment or criticize. Yes, yes thank you, Nima. Um, what I was wondering, so you have designed a MOOC about open science, right? So um, do you then practice what you preach? Are you using existing materials in your MOOC that have been recorded or made by someone else? That's a good question. Yeah. In the MOOC, um, I have definitely used um, CC0 uh, images. And where they're not, uh, so CC, by the way, is a Creative Commons licensing. That means uh, those are openly, freely accessible um, pictures that are just available to everyone to use. And sometimes people will specify that you have to um, also uh, give them credit and say, oh, this picture was taken by this and that person. And um, sometimes people give other um, sort of restrictions on how you can use these, um, these materials. But yes, I've, I've used materials that were um, published under a CC license um, in this talk. Uh, in this book. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, cool. uh, yeah, yeah sure, you can respond. So th there are a number of other uh, in initiatives like yours out there, right? Are you familiar with those and have you considered using materials from them, for example? Yeah, so um, I, I haven't put anyone else's thoughts basically into this talk, into this book that's, um, I don't want to say it's all mine, but <laughs> that's um, sort of my uh, production, my contribution. And um, I want to make sure that it is freely accessible for others to use. And um, the way I want to make it usable is to also link to other projects. Because yes, I'm aware this is definitely not the only open, open anything course. Um, there are many out there. And I think open educational resources like this, they are too few at the moment. So I think it's fair that I contribute another one. And one that is actually quite specific and not too long. So I'm not sure how massive it is. <laughs> but um, yeah, there are definitely other things out there that uh, you can use in your teaching and in your own learning. So thanks for bringing that up. Thank you very much. Two more questions, I go over here. Yes. So where can we find more information about this MOOC? Oh, yeah. yeah, where can we find it? 
We've seen a little bit, but if you want to see the full clip. Yeah, so um, the full clip is still being edited. That means it's not quite there yet. That means I have to ask for a little bit of patience. Okay. And uh, it'll soon, at some point, appear on the Tilburg University website. And then um, it'll also live on YouTube. And I'm sure you will hear of it once it's actually there. But um, so far, it still it only lives on a hard drive. In the in the studio on campus, um, so it's, I, I, I can't show you all of it. And soon is that a matter of days, weeks, months, years? What is soon? It's completely not in my hands. It's completely okay. in the hands of the editor. So I've done my part. <laughs> oh, oh, we know. It's it's taken a couple of weeks. Down with it. Yeah, a couple of weeks. Couple of weeks. Yeah, a couple of weeks, and then it will be online. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for that question. Yes. Over here, so we can all hear what. Yes. One of the things I'm looking for, and one of the reasons why I'm attending is I'm, I'm, I'm looking for templates um, for open education materials such as your MOOC or um, I have like a bunch of assignments that I plan to release open source but I don't want to quote unquote waste my time on like thinking what is a good format to put it in. I just want a template where I can paste it and publish it. Um, can you, uh, like, yeah, maybe there are also other people yeah. in the room and maybe we can have like a list of links or people yeah. to approach. Yeah. 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 I can also maybe whoop, ask this question to Dan. Yeah, oh. Yeah. Can, can you help this gentleman? I don't want to steal your whole uh, presentation here. <laughs> yeah, um, so yes, there are a number of uh, platforms that, that contain uh, open educational resources. There is also a number of uh, websites, for example, that contain uh, textbooks that are completely editable and uh, that can be uh, uh, that, that allow for the export of IMS packages. And IMS packages are content types that you can directly import into your uh, digital learning environment. So Dan, I don't know which one you use here. Is that Brightspace or Canvas or Blackboard? I Canvas. Oh, I hear Canvas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this so this textbook would then be uh, you would be able to 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 cut this apart in any way you see fit and then export that directly into your uh, Canvas environment. So that means that this material becomes extremely easy to use and reuse for others. So there is a number of places where you can find resources like this. And yes, I can uh, I can help with finding those. But that's the good news. The bad news is is that there's really not that big of an, uh, a movement along the, these lines yet. Yeah. So the amount of books are limited, and but more is being done as we speak. So yeah. yeah. Thanks for the question. Thanks for that answer. Anything to add? Um, okay, okay. And, and of course, go to Dan Rutte. Yeah. Yes. Um, I actually just did a workshop at the um, conference of the Society for the Improvement of Psychological Science about open educational resources. So if you want a summary on where to find them and how to make them, um, I have a, the workshop is on the OSF. You're welcome to use it and to take a look at it. Um, Dan, can I give you the link and pop it up there? Yeah. Yeah, so we can do that. You do that? For now, you said anything? Everything you want to say for now? Oh, I'm good, yeah. And uh, you can be our, our conscience. So uh, you're going to sit over there and whenever you raise your hand, you will be the first to talk. And you get a big round of applause now. Thank you very much. Be my